What's up y'all? Alvin here. That's right. This fly is not the fly you think it is, but it's almost the fly you think it is. <laughs> I tell the good jokes. <laughs> All right, so this fly is real similar to the Dido popper, but I think it's different enough to be its own fly, and it's close enough that we're just gonna call it the D2. Um, so what it is, is the Dido popper, but in more of a pencil popper style. And I've been tying it like this for a while, and I haven't seen anybody else tie it like this. Most of them tie it kind of the way I tied the original one. So I thought I'd show everybody this version of it and that way you can have another little super simple, easy to tie down and dirty fish catching guide fly to add to your arsenal. So get a hook in here and I'll show you. Like all these flies, it's super easy to tie, only a few materials. And the thing is, is we're going with a this is, I believe, a 2X long hook. Uh, you definitely want at least a 1X, maybe a 2X, because we are gonna make the body a little bit longer. Uh, the, the, the hook I'm using today is this Mustad uh, Alpha Point streamer hook. It is a size two watt, and I'll throw a link to that in the description. I'll put all this stuff in the description with links if you wanna buy them but that's what it looks like. It is a wide gap and it is, a, a, I believe, a 1X long hook in a size 2 watt. And this hook is good for bass fishing, but you could also use these in the salt. So this is also one that I would use for throwing at jacks or you know bull reds or any other fish that you want to make a slightly larger profile popper for. All right, so we got a hook. We're gonna use foam. <laughs> uh, with this one now, I've got a, a couple of different strips of foam. This one is three quarters of an inch. So this piece is about the same length as the shank of the hook. And so what you, your dimensions are gonna change depending on your hook size. So if you've got a longer shank hook, this piece of foam is gonna be longer or shorter. And this piece of foam here is probably gonna stay the same. You may go a little bit shorter. So I've got a strip that's half inch. I got a strip that's three quarters of an inch. Then we're going to have a white thread, but the thread color doesn't really matter because it's gonna be buried underneath the foam. So I'm using white thread just because that's what I had handy. Um, but you can use any color. But I would suggest a thicker, you know, like a bass bug, saltwater type foam, excuse me, saltwater type thread. And then we got a white zonker strip, um, you know, nothing fancy. Depending on the size of the fly, you may want to use a larger or smaller zonker strip. Uh, and also, you know, like the rest of these flies, you can tie this thing in multiple different colors. So you can mix and match it if you want to put, you know, a white tail with a green body or vice versa, whatever. You can, you know, make this fly in a bunch of different colors and sizes now. The other thing is, um, I've heard from people who have tied the original Dido popper and have had some issues with it laying down on its side. Uh, a couple of things, it's usually either it's too tall or the tail material is not heavy enough. So one of the reasons I went with the zonker strip initially, you know, you would think on a top water fly, you would want something that didn't soak up a lot of water, but I think the the way that the zonker strip soaks up water helps the fly to sit upright better. So I would suggest using Rabbit. Also, it's super durable and these flies really last a long time. So I think having the zonker strip for the tail just makes the fly last longer in general. Uh, the only other things you're gonna need and for this fly, I'm using a 10 millimeter 
googly eye, <laughs> I don't know, doll eye, whatever you wanna call them. And once again, that's gonna be just depending on the size of the fly you're tying. You may want a smaller one, you may want a bigger one, but that's what I got, 10 millimeter. And once again, I'm gonna put links to all that stuff in the description. And the only other thing that you need is some super glue. Uh, anything that's waterproof will work. I like this gel control stuff because it kind of stays where you put it and it seems to dry pretty quick. So that's the stuff that I use, the gel control super glue. And once again, I will put a link to that in the description. All right, so let's start tying. I got my hook in the vise already and we're gonna go ahead and attach our thread. Just kind of start here toward the middle and wrap it. I usually wrap it even with the point. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is attach our tail. And I used to like, I usually like to make the tail about the same length as the shank of the hook. So maybe, and maybe a little bit longer even. Gonna make it a little bit longer because I'm gonna have some of it tied down. So that's about what I want right there. So about like that. Just tie that down. You can uh, whip finish it if you want, but most of this stuff is gonna be buried. All of this stuff is gonna be buried underneath the foam. And I do like to wrap the thread up and back a couple of times. That little thread base under there, I think, helps the uh, foam stick to the hook a little bit better and not twist around. So I'm just gonna throw a couple of half hitches on here. I said we don't need to worry about whip finishing it because, okay. So we've got that thread. Trimming it off. And then we're gonna add our first piece of foam. Now I'm probably gonna make this a little bit thicker than I want it at the end because what's gonna happen is we're gonna taper this. So I'm gonna double it over and that's probably around a half an inch. I'm just gonna cut that off and give it a little bit more than a half an inch. Get my big scissors out for this. I'm gonna kinda test fit it. All right, that is about what we're looking for. We'll go ahead and put some glue on it. All right, once we got the glue on, we're gonna just stick it on like so and squeeze it together. Try to really get all the bubbles out of there. Okay, so now we gotta figure out what kind of taper we want. And I'm gonna just start like so. This is one of the things you can make this. That is about what I'm looking for right there. And then we'll go ahead and grab our, I think for this particular fly, the half inch strip of foam is gonna be what we want. So I'm just kind of test fit it like so. Fold it over. Clip it off. All right, so I think that is about what we're looking for. So I'll go ahead and put a little glue on here. A little glue on the top. And we are almost finished. Okay, so that little guy on there 
hold it down, squeeze it. Then we'll go ahead and put the eyes on. Now that's another thing that I think uh, helps make this fly ride upright is putting the eyes on it. Just kind of like little outriggers. Let's give it a little bit more flotation and also the eyes do provide a little bit of a rattle. All right. <laughs> I'm going to call that done. <laughs> So, once again, you can make it fancier if you'd like. You can put a uh, flash on it uh, with the tail. You can use markers and color it. Uh, but, you know, oh, you can also put a weed guard on. But for, for most of the stuff I'm doing, that is it right there. So. We're calling that bad boy the D2. <laughs> All right, y'all, so there it is. <laughs> uh, good luck out there with this fly. I've caught a ton of fish on it, so I know it works. Once again, this is one of those down and dirty guide flies, super easy to tie, fish catching, and it's pretty durable. And like I said, you can tie it in many different sizes, many different colors. So as usual, I wanna thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you haven't, please subscribe to my channel. Um, check out my other channels. You can sign up for my email list. You can even buy some merch. I'll put links to all that stuff in the description along with the materials to tie the fly. Thanks for watching the video. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. And in the meantime, good luck on the water.